Hi AP Statistics students, this is Ms. Gokan giving you an introduction to Chapter 1 and really to our entire course of AP Statistics that we're going to be studying this year. One of the things that we'll learn is that statistics are numbers that help us to study, analyze, summarize, and make inferences about a, a greater population around us. And we've seen statistics used in medicine, in economics, in oh gosh, in just about every area in business, in efficiency, in engineering, and just about every area. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn first of all a lot, a lot, a lot of vocabulary and some new problem solving skills. So you'll see the chapter name is exploring data. Of course we're going to be doing that in chapter one but in addition to that we're going to start out by using some data analysis skills and making sense of data. So we definitely have uh, an outline here of our chapter. We have three different sections in the chapter after the introduction. We're going to talk about both categorical and quantitative data and ways that we can describe and display data. It's going to be very important for us to not only show what the data looks like in a picture, they always say a picture paints a thousand words, but in addition to that we're going to have some numbers that we're going to look at, just like in the study of economics or finance where you have specific numbers that kind of tell the story for you. Our specific objectives by the end of this section is we want to be able to define and distinguish between the terms individuals and variables, between categorical and quantitative variables. We want to know what a distribution is, what it looks like, how would we, we recognize one, and how we describe one. And we want to understand what the idea of inference is. So statistics is the science of data. And that means that we use numbers to study data. Data analysis is the process of organizing, displaying, summarizing, and asking questions about data. And what this is directly to one of our objectives. We know that when we're looking at a set of data, we can describe it. We are going to use a variable to describe a characteristic about an individual. And so the individuals are the things, it could be people, animal, or things, that are described by a set of data. So we're going to take a look at an example. But first of all, we have different types of variable. Major categories are, uh, the major categories of variables are the categorical variable and the quantitative variable. And quantitative variable is just what it sounds like. It's a numerical value such as your age or your height or your weight or your, uh, let's see, your eye measurement when they, when you go to the eye doctor and they test your eyes. It's, it's any number that really has a numerical value. Not like a phone number. A phone number, even though they're numbers, they it wouldn't make sense to add two, for instance, to your phone number or to double it. Where if you have a, a child height, we may say, you know, from the time they're two, we expect that their height will be doubled by the time they turn 12 or whatever. A categorical variable also is what it sounds like. It is either a name or a category or a characteristic description. So for example, if I asked a set of students what your favorite color is, what their favorite color is, that would be a categorical variable. Or for example, that number that I was talking about that really isn't a number, like a phone number or a student ID. It's not a number that we would do math on. So those are the two major categories of variables. A variable can take on a lot of different different values. So for example, in that example that I was just telling you about where we ask the students their favorite color, the variable is favorite color. The values that it could take on might be red or turquoise or orange or purple. Okay, so a variable can take on many different values. In data analysis, sometimes we want to know what the values are are, of course, and sometimes we're interested in how frequently or how often a variable takes on a specific value. A distribution is when we take a look at the frequency 
of each of the different values. And you may remember this from kindergarten, but one of the very first things that you do when you're looking at graphs in kindergarten and, and beginning math skills is we ask each of the students how many letters are in their first name. So for example, if your name is Mary, it's four letters. And then we count up how many other people have four letters in their name, and so on. So here we have an example of cars and the miles per gallon that that car, is, one of the characteristics of the car. And we notice that we have two different variables. The individuals are the Acura, the Audi, the Bentley, the BMW, the Buick LaCrosse, etc. But we have those rows then are the individuals and the columns represent our variables. So we have a categorical variable which is the model name and we have a numerical variable which is the miles per gallon. Now if we took that variable of interest, the miles per gallon, and we wanted to graph it in a distribution, what we would do is we would line them up numerically across the bottom and then we would count up how many of each of those miles per gallon. We would, all the way on the left, we would have the lowest value, all the way on the right, we would have the highest value, and then we would stack those dots to represent the count of how many different models had that value for their miles per gallon. That distribution is of interest to us and we can gain intelligence from looking at a distribution. So we examine each variable by itself and then we look at the relationship between the variables. Graphing is a great tool for us because as we said before, a picture paints a thousand words. And then we add numerical summaries where we're going to be using our graphing calculator extensively. We will become very good at the graphing calculator. And those numbers tell us something and allow us to move further along with our data and use them for inference. So da from data analysis to inference, basically what we're doing with inference is we're taking information from a sample or about a sample and we're using that to infer information about a population. So if I wanted to know which candidate would probably win an election, I would stand outside a polling center and I would sample a certain number of voters and I would never of course be able to ask every single voter all over the country or all over the community. So I take a sample of the voters and I poll them and I infer that the result of my poll of my sample is going to be the same as the result that the overall population will demonstrate. Okay, here we have an example on our textbook on page five and this is about discrimination so make sure if you haven't already read that example pause the video now go read that example in your textbook and then come back here. So what we end up doing is we have a simulation. We do five repetitions of the simulation and then we share our data so that we can graph it. This graph demonstrates the distribution of the simulated data from the class of the number of female pilots. Okay, so once again, in the vertical direction we have frequency or a count of how many times that particular value occurred. And on the horizontal, we have the variable that we're talking about. Okay, in summary, we have learned that a data set contains information about individuals for each individual. Data gives value for one or more variables. Variables can either be quantitative or categorical. The distribution of a variable describes what value the variable takes and how often that value is taken on. An inference is where we take a sample and we draw our conclusion about a population. That's it for our introduction. We're going to have another video for section 1.1. So we will see you then when we learn how to graph and summarize some data.